I said it's not an emergency. Maybe it's an emergency. Alright, I'm attempting to show you this shelf. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I just realized that I never filmed an intro for this vlog, so here I am, sort of post-April Maddie, but I don't know. This has been kind of a crazy few weeks that I vlogged, basically um, the last half of April. I was hoping to get through a ton of revisions, and I think I did. So you'll be seeing a bit of my process getting some revisions done, but also some other like small writing projects, some bookish things, some things in here, but also just like some general life stuff. We had a few catastrophes, one writing related, one house related, and then also I've just been spending a lot of time working out in the garden. So you'll see a lot of um, little clips of me starting to set up the garden, starting to clear it out, seeing some of the little seeds growing and stuff, which is always such a fun time of the year when everything is like neat and orderly before we lose it all to chaos. But yes, so welcome to this, today's vlog, today's vlog this vlog, whatever. Um, also right here, I will put a little uh, status of probably where I started at the beginning of the vlog. So where I was about mid-April. And then yeah, let's get going. It's about time to get the garden set up for the year. This is how I keep track of all of my seeds. I have them on little baggies with the important information on them. And I have all sorts. Our raspberry and blackberry canes have gotten very much out of control, but right now I'm just going through and cutting out the old canes, which are this kind of old dried out color. You can sort of see one in there versus the redder ones that are new canes. And then I'll trim the new canes down to three or four. All right, this is so much better. Hello, good morning. It is one of my off Fridays and I thought it'd be fun to do like a little vlog today and kind of show what I'm doing, what I'm working on, give some fun updates, but I need to put together a to-do list of all the things I want to do today. I know that I want to finish, <laughs> finish writing the script for and at least filming, editing, and posting the first video in my scene structure or my general like plot structure breakdown this video and putting these notes together has been taking me I cannot tell you how many hours I have been working on this it is gonna be epic so uh please watch it and be like thank you for all of your hard work even if you hate the video or don't like it you know just it's been a lot of work but anyway I want to finish that and get the first one like uploaded and posted on my channel today so that's my first priority um, and then I want to work on some more revisions. I want to work on getting caught up on some laundry and getting a few things prepped for this weekend. And then I have a couple other fun video projects that I may work on today. And I don't know when I'll post this vlog, but, or when I'll post those videos, but the two other things I'm working on are, I'm doing an experiment where I am learning some like, historical medieval martial arts so I've been working a little bit with um, longsword and uh, rapier and then a bit of archery so I'm gonna do like a video on at least the I think the longsword part of it and some general like medieval swordsmanship stuff that I've been learning I found a bunch of historical manuals and everything so I want to work on that some a bit more and then I'm also planning a solo writing retreat as my Mother's Day present. So I might do a video for that, but yes. First things first is I need to finish writing this freaking script. So I'm going to work on that and finish my coffee. I need to go take a quick break because I need to run outside and water the garden because it's gonna be really hot today. And I'm gonna to try to figure out a way to not terrorize the bunnies. We have baby bunnies and they have a little burrow under one of our, I think it's a lavender bush. 
I will, I think I have a video of them, so I'll show you that, and then I'll go out and water the garden. sort of see their burrow. Okay, I just finished filming the first video. That took an hour and a half. And it's probably only gonna be a 20 minute video. Maybe it'll be 30 minutes, I don't know, we'll see. But it's already one o'clock, I need to go eat lunch, I need to edit it and post it. The day is just disappearing in front of me. Um, I think it's gonna take probably at least two hours to edit that video which puts us at at least three or four o'clock, which is kind of the end of my day. So I'm really not gonna get to do anything other than this, which is a little bit sad, but I'll have time tonight and tomorrow to work on the other stuff. So this isn't done. This is the Lego set my husband is working on right now. It's uh, extremely epic. And I've just been like playing around with all the little like pieces. I think this is Galadriel. You have all the little hobbitses right here. Oh no, that's Frodo's head. Little Frodo. He hasn't finished doing all the members of the Fellowship, but you can see everyone here. It's Legolas. And, oh, come on, come on. Gimli. So freaking cool. Okay, so I just had uh, some lunch. And I've been working on editing this video. Oh my gosh, it's taking forever. I don't even know how long the video was to start with. It has to be an hour or longer, but I have it down to 42 minutes now. And let me turn this around and show you what this looks like. Because when I film a video based off a script, I will like look at a line, memorize it, look back to the camera, recite it, look back, recite it, look back. Beside it. So I have all those breaks when I'm looking back, I have to cut them out. So it's a lot. So like, let me turn this around if you could see it. So you can see that uh, all those teeny tiny little splits are what I've edited so far. And that's what I have to edit now. So yeah. These kind of videos take me so long. These like actually structured videos where I'm not just like talking about whatever comes into my head. I'm not very eloquent that way, but I don't know. I may stop here and like go take a bath and read or something recharging. Cause like I'm slowly dying. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I needed to stop. It's slowly killing me. So, uh, I'm taking a break. It's like three o'clock now. I'm gonna find myself a smutty supernatural romance to binge read and take a bath because oh, I'm burnt. Yeah. On the bright side, the garden's looking good. Already dry from all the water I poured all over it this morning though. Bush beans obviously sprouted first. The cantaloupes are coming up now. Oh. Really should have remembered how long it takes everything we planted to sprout, but I don't think anything else out here has come up. None of the green onions. 
None of the carrots over here have come up. And none of our peas. None of the new canes I tried to plant seem to have taken properly, so. Just in the last couple of days, these seedlings have come up so much. Okay. I have fuzzy socks. I am gonna sit down to do some revisions. It is 7.41 on Monday. I <laughs> clearly did not do uh, much more filming last weekend, but you know, that's okay. I don't even know. It's been a weird day today, but last weekend was really good. I did, let me hold this up for you real quick. So I did a ton of revisions compared to how I've normally been doing and then I finally finished that one video and I even did a little bit of query research. I'm still like, I don't know. 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 I have, oh gosh, what month is it? It's April. It's mid-April. I'm planning on starting to query at the beginning of July, I think. So I'm going to be doing all of my query research in the next couple of months and I've, I've been peeking at it every now and then and the question I've been deliberating is do I want to set myself up for like long-term querying or just do like what short-term research I need to do I'm up in the air I've sort of just been doing like general research right now and I think when it comes to compiling agents like there's a lot of levels to it like you could look for the agents that are open for queries and would be interested in your, like, in this specific manuscript I'm going to be querying. So I could look for that. I could look for all agents that would be potentially interested in my manuscript, regardless of if they're open to queries or not, because they could open to queries sometime in the year I anticipate querying for. Or I could just look for any agents, regardless of whether or not they're open, that could be interested in something I might want to write which is obviously a much bigger list. And I need to like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do that and like make a really big list and then like not have as much details and then just copy that list over for each manuscript and just mark the agents that like, oh, these aren't open. These ones wouldn't be particularly interested in my book, etc. Um, So I don't know, but I was kind of doing a little bit of poking around. I like to do it every now and then and keep track of, um, I've mainly just been keeping track of deals, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm getting close to starting those videos though, which is exciting, but for tonight, I'm going to do some revisions because I feel like I'm finally in a good flow with revisions, so I'm really excited about that. I had a couple of nights where it took, what, like four blocks or two hours just to do um, a couple of chapters. Um, well, that's how long it took for each chapter. And I've gotten into the a role where they've mostly been taking me one task block, so 30 minutes. Maybe some are taking an hour, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like I'm in a flow, and I'm going, and it's, you know, I'm gonna try and take advantage of that. Um, what is it even called? Momentum. Yeah. Yes, that's my plan. So, yeah. Yes, I have no idea what I was talking about on Friday, but. I had a weekend. It was a weekend. I did weekend stuff. I did stuff as I showed you. I don't know. Let's revise. Hold the phone. I just went to open Scrivener and it said my Scrivener document wasn't where it was before. And I'm freaking out a little bit. Where's my Scrivener document? I don't have a roar of whispers in my recents since the 10th, but I literally did revisions yesterday morning. It's not in my recycle bin. Oh no. Where did it go? Where could it have gone? I'm gonna text my husband and put out an SOS and uh, hopefully he can help me. Okay, I texted him. I said it's not an emergency. 
Maybe it's an emergency. Okay, hold on. Okay, so we did manage to save my vials. That was really stressful. Um, I don't really know what happened. I think if you have two Scrivener documents where the name of the actual, like, Scrivener project itself is the same, they can get confused. So I think it like, like, you know, you have a folder and then in it you have like the Scrivener file, but then you have all the like document files and the data files. All of that was there except for that Scrivener file. But then one of my backup ones from like a week ago or a week prior was still there fully, but it obviously wasn't as up to date. We ended up just having to basically move the updated document files into the old one and like replace the ones like the same data file you would, I don't know. We figured it out. I renamed all the files that they're all different and I hope that never happens again. <laughs> it's very stressful. It like, it triggered a little bit of one of my weird like migraine things where I get the like neurological issues. So I was kind of out for the count the rest of the evening, just like kind of uncomfortable. And also just like, that was kind of stressful. And then I was like, ugh. So I relaxed. And then the next night I had like a bit of a migraine. I don't really get the head pain, but like I get a bunch of the other symptoms. So I was really nauseous, really sensitive to light. I had a little bit of a headache and I just didn't feel good. So then I relaxed. And then last night I had other stuff I had to do. So it's actually Friday now, <laughs> which I think I started this vlog a week ago. So yeah, but I wanted to, ooh, I wanna show you a few books I got. But before that, I just want to go through and look at my schedule and see how much I think I'm going to get done before the end of the month. Yes. We've had to completely clear off our counters, clean everything. We've been having ant problems where they come up through the crack here. So we're gonna clean it, let it dry, recalk all of that because everything we've been drying over the last week and a half has not been enough. But the little plants are doing good. Our beans, cantaloupe, watermelon. We're starting to get some second leaves in there. They're almost ready to harden. These guys have been ready to harden for a while, but I need to do it. And then the kids' flowers are all sprouting and coming up. This is nice. Cold in the wet. Azalea bushes are looking good, but we have so many weeds out here. This azalea bush is just dead. And our hydrangea is actually looking pretty good this year, so we'll see. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's enough for a day. I think this looks really good. Did a lot of caulk along here because this is where the gap was the biggest and the ants were crawling through, but we just kind of went through, scraped off all the old caulk. I recaulked all of it. I think it looks really nice. It's still drying, obviously that's why it looks kind of cloudy, but it'll dry clear and you won't even be able to see it. Very nice. Before. After. So, pretty big difference. This is not exactly how it's gonna go, but I have a new shelf up here. I don't know if I want Wheel of Time to be centered or if I wanna put it to one side and then put something cool on the other side. I don't really know yet, but I still have my nice, super fun map. 
And then I have Rivendale, which my husband put together. This has been uh, his hobby for a while, which, you know, this is really cool, but it doesn't quite fill up all this space either. So not entirely sure what I want to do here, but I now have a little bit more space to sort of display some stuff because he keeps building Legos and then he doesn't know where to put them. So yeah, before and after. All right, so I'm not quite sure how well you can see this, but I've been sort of reorganizing. I put all of my sort of historical reference books here on this shelf, which I don't know how well you could see it. Let me, but so I sort of sectioned them off. This is just like a really long history of England, um, but I'm then sort of sectioning it off into rough areas around the world and rough time periods so that I can reference the same books. Because, like, this period, like, these are the castles in that time era. You know, a time traveler's guide to everyday life in. Um, Toxophilus, which is a, you know, archery guide from that era. Just, like, different stuff based off the time period. And, as you can probably see, this leans very European. In general, there's a lot more, like, books out about that. I don't know if, like, that's just because I'm only looking in English. But I've been having trouble finding a lot of books from other places around the world so I need to look into that a little bit more but I want to get like better ways to section this off as my uh like collection expands but I'm pretty excited about it I actually just got all the um the time traveler's guide to books which I think this is is this almost all the ones I have I think I'm missing one which is the restoration so I have time traveler's guide to regency to Elizabeth in England and to medieval England. So yeah, I think I'm just missing the restoration one, but it was like really long shipping. So that is what's here. All right, I'm attempting to show you this shelf. This is like all my non-active like craft or like my story stuff. So all the books are my different like craft books. And if I move you over here, maybe you can see like the labels. So I have like ones on world building, editing, plot, characters, and like general writing ones. Um, and then over here is like all my story references. This is like an early printed draft. This is one of my like world building map folders. Some of these have like world building stuff, outlines, uh, world bibles, that sort of stuff for projects I'm not actively working on right now. So then my goal for this shelf is for it to be sort of like fun stuff and like active reference stuff. So I want to get another one of those, which I don't know if you can tell what it is, but it's sort of like acrylic and it has little like dividers in it. Um, and I sort of want to get that for like the project I'm actively working on because there will be like certain sets of craft books, certain sets of like world building and reference books, my outlines, my world building guide, all of that that I'm going to need like while I'm working on certain phases of a book. So I want to have something down here so that I can put what I need actively. Like, okay, these are sort of historical references for the time period and area that I'm sort of basing this world on. Here's some other reference material. Like, um, I have this, uh, Nature's Remedies book, which is like an illustrated guide to healing herbs, which is relevant for one of my projects. Hence, you can see all the stickies. So it'd be nice to be able to keep these kind of books in one spot and then once I'm starting a project I can pull down all the reference material I need and keep it at hand. But I don't know, it also let me put this fun thing here, so like, this is the Lego typewriter that my husband built because my husband has a problem and he's gotten really into Legos, it's now his like, stress relief thing, which is fine. Some of them are going in here, some of them are for the kids, some of them are going other places at some point I think we'll start taking them apart and boxing them up so that like he and the kids can do them later but who knows um but yeah I'm excited to have more space it's making me think about like all the additional like reference material I really want because I have all like my um different like um swordsmanship type guides like the martial art manuals that are historical um I want to get a lot of just like maps like just books of maps and just like a lot of stuff like that that I can reference and I've been looking into conlanging a little bit if you know what that is. It's like building your own languages. 
And there's this one book that I have a Kindle version of, and I'm considering getting a physical copy of it just so I can put it up there to reference, because I don't... I will get Kindle books for books that I will sit down and read and might make notes on and put in, like, my notes, but I will almost exclusively never remember to go back and reference them again, because, like, they're on my Kindle, I forget that they exist. So if I really think I'm going to want to reference a book over and over, I might want to get a physical copy to put up here. Um, but yeah, because it's cool. I've been using, like, different for, like, naming languages. Because you can do conlanging for naming languages or for actual, like, full, like, spoken, you could be fluent in this language languages. And for the most part, I don't think I have a need to do, like, a full, full conlang. I would probably pay someone to do that for me, like, make some sort of deal with like, I don't know. But I'd probably do that if I had that sort of a need, but for coming up with like naming languages and for trying to come up with like accents that would imply an underlying language, you know, like slightly different word structures, slightly different grammar, slightly different like pronunciation of certain letters that you can pull out into speech. Stuff like that would be really cool to do. Um, I'm, you, you can tell I'm a total nerd. I'm a total nerd with all of this, but I want to get more books like that because I've been reading them and like looking at articles, but I think it's time for me to get some like actual like find the best ones, get some really good reference books. So but yeah, if you have any cool like reference ideas or books that you think are really helpful, um, especially if you have like historical references from non-European areas, right? Like I have nothing from Southern America. I have a few like colonial and wild west america i'm probably fine with that but like i don't have anything on like you know like different native american cultures and like inuit and like all that sort of stuff i have nothing from like australia or africa i have a few from like asia i have like a couple for japan and nothing on china like i just have a lot of holes in the different like areas and i want to pull from a really diverse source of ideas just so that when I'm building worlds I have a more diverse like foundation to build from you know I don't I don't write historical fantasy I don't write things that are direct copies of cultures that existed in history but I I don't know it's hard I think to build worlds with an inspiration if you haven't been exposed to a lot of different things you know like the basic core values of a society and the time period, but also the, like, geographical area that they're from, what the climate region is, what sort of plants and animals are nearby, like, those all have a very big effect on, like, the culture and society and the types of, like, clothes they wear and foods they eat, and if you're only exposed to, like, European history and then you try to write something that's in a very different geographical place, like, it's really hot and they have completely different animals and maybe it's like an island based thing that's I don't know like it wouldn't make a lot of sense so if you have any suggestions let me know I am always open to more suggestions reading more books but yes I think this is all organized now and I can actually like do something again yeah I also probably need to go downstairs and see how that caulk is drying and check on my plants I did bring them back inside Hardening is hardening them is rough, and it's why we haven't done seedlings before, because we never actually hardened them properly. We would, like, start them inside, chuck them in the garden, and they'd mostly die, and then we stopped doing it. So I'm trying really hard to harden them properly this time, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. Everyone's outside hardening up. Most of these have their two leaves. The second true leaves. And these guys are doing good. We have a lot of grass coming up here, but you can see some of these are my little green onions. That's these little guys. This is all grass. That's all weeds that we'll have to, you know, pull up at some point. Our peas are coming up quite nicely. So those are gonna be getting to the trellis soon and the tomatoes are getting a little bit bigger and are probably about ready to attach to the trellis. So 
we're coming along nicely. Blueberry bush is getting quite big. There's quite a lot of little buds going on it. If you can see those. The strawberries are coming up nicely, but if you'll notice, this is not a strawberry plant. Neither is this. Neither is that, I believe. Those are all blackberries, so the canes must have regrown from where I didn't pull them out all the way, so we'll need to rip those up or replant them over here because we probably could use another new one over here. This one didn't really, I don't know, the ones I transplanted didn't really regrow in, so. But we're getting quite leafy up here. And the raspberries are doing good too. doing pretty good. All right, so I think that's gonna kind of conclude uh, the April vlog, which has been a bit crazy, but it's kind of a good stopping point because I'm gonna be going on a um, solo writing retreat this weekend, which you should have already seen my planning video for that, but I'll also have probably, maybe the video after this one, I'm not sure, will end up being um, my video ab about that because I'm going to vlog it as much as I can but I'm so excited I can't even tell you like there's just been so much going on here we made it through all the you know kids getting sick constantly at the beginning of the year and now you've been just doing a lot of like yard work there's been a lot of housework like with the ants like oh my gosh like that has been such a nightmare dealing with that just like weeks of mm, yes but I think we have that all figured out. We're getting cleaned up and you know, I'm really looking forward to May. I think we're gonna be doing a lot of exciting thing. it's things. It's not just like months of revisions. I'll be finishing up this pass of revisions, maybe even at my writing retreat. And then I'll be working on like query prep and um, doing my like very last pass with like some like last line edit stuff and proofreading stuff and all of that. So I'm very very excited for all of that um let me give you a quick update on where i am from a writing perspective here uh right before i go on my writing retreat which i'm so excited about it's gonna be an absolute blast but yes i think i will leave you here and i will see you next time <laughs>